Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Sky, aka Raw Sky on social media. And when Sky approached me, I looked into her story and her journey and <laughs> I, I, I was amazed. I think, to be honest, it's probably the most amazing transformation, the most powerful transformation I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> I didn't think it was possible. So, without further ado, Sky, if you can just give a little intro into your situation, uh, your journey and how you found raw foods because for anyone who doesn't know Sky was ill for over 30 years and bedridden for over 25 of those 15 of them uh, completely in bed so I think it's really powerful if you could share your journey Sky that would be amazing. Sure. First off Dylan thank you so much for having me um, it's an honour to be here um, but it all started for me when I was 8 so I'm now 43 just turned 43 and when I was eight, I got a bad chicken pox, just normal chicken pox. And then afterwards, I couldn't really get back to school. Had these massive glands, was at doctors all the time. This went on for years and um, I was wrong. Eventually, a doctor said, um, had a look and said, you have tonsils and back of your adenoids have been eaten away by bacteria and you have to have them removed. So I was, this is about, so I was about 11 at this stage and I had them removed and I slowly got better. Um, and I did well for about three or four years, um, up until I was getting about 15 or 16, all of a sudden I had like really bad, uh, stomach pains, back pains, went to doctors, my hormones are out, went to naturopaths. They said my whole body was awry, but this kind of ended up going to a lot of gynecologists cause I had a lot of pelvic and back pain and they started putting, using hormones to treat it, surgeries. They started, um, like doing ablations on areas, removing nerves, um, ligaments, glands. Um, they all the tests they did a lot of exploratory surgeries. And as I'm getting towards the age of 19, I'm having all these surgeries. I'm barely, I was able to finish school, but I missed like half of the last year of school. I was just basically in bed all the time as all the time. So as I'm getting um, older, they're doing biofeedback on my body and trying to get me to control like the pain. And when they put the biofeedback on, which they use for women giving birth, they couldn't get a start reading. So basically my nerves, and it doesn't mean I was interpreting the pain every day as labor pain, but was so fired that I was you know, like an extreme amount of pain, basically off the charts type pain. Eventually I've practically given up by the time I was like 20. I could I was started university and I kept having to stop because of more surgeries. And eventually a surgeon went in and a second piece of uterus attached to nerves and ligaments on the back of my like uterus sacral ligament. It's a congenital disease. It's called endostromatosis. Endo being the endocrine system, stroma being like an osis made it a disease. Um, they hadn't seen it before, but what that meant is basically my body made um, a huge amount of estrogen receptors I was susceptible to pain, but also this was causing pain. I took it out and I was pain-free again for about two years. By this stage, I was living with chronic fatigue. So I started working, but I was living off like caffeine, had constant coughs, I was at doctors all the time. Um, and then the pain started back and they put me on anti-inflammatory medication. So the prescribed ones, doing more surgeries um, to try and like ease the amount of pain. Now, I became extremely anemic where I don't even know how I was functioning, but eventually I couldn't stay conscious anymore. So I was actually, I didn't know at the time, but vomiting digested blood and it was coming out the other end of me as well. And there wasn't enough blood left in my body. So every time like I sat up out of bed, I just collapsed and would, but then so went off to emergency and the doctor explained to doctors in an emergency room, you know, your long-term disease. And they're like, you know, this isn't for us. We're going to have to transfer you to another hospital. Um, but they had to give me blood transfusions because my hemoglobin was like at 47 fluids. And a gastro doctor came in and he said, he had any new symptoms? And I said, well, to be honest, at night I get like a heart heartburn, like a real stabbing pain. But compared to my back pain, it's not really a thing. And he goes, look, I'll do a scope. He said to my mum, go home, have a shower. It'll be like 40 minutes. 14 hours later, they had to, at this time, bring in a another surgeon they cut me open I was bleeding out internally I had a perforated duodenal ulcer which rotted all up into my stomach and it was so bad I just didn't feel it so if that got to that level 
Anyway, they tried to cauterize both sides and waking up like ICU, HCU, it's weeks and then you're not eating for like a month and then you're re-feeding and anyway, I'm about to go home. The night before I'm about to go home, I projectile bright red blood all over the room and they rushed me back up and they put me back into surgery um, and they try and like save the, all these organs again. And they said, look, if you vomit blood one more time, we're going to have to remove your stomach, your duodenum and top of your intestines. And um, they drew like a picture of it. And I, when a few weeks came out of ice, like I, assume, I think it was HCU, came out of that, stood up, vomited blood. And they said, we're going to have to take it out. So massive, big surgery. They, they did leave a little pocket up the top, but over time it's just dropped from the esophagus um, to the bowel. Um, so I came out of that, then my liver got infected, kidneys, more drain, drainage and surgery, but I finally got back, got back to work and I did well for about 10 months. I was extremely underweight because during that time I fasted, like eating for practically like the three or four months. Like I eat a little bit, then they, you know, more surgery and no eating for like a month. Mm. And, but at the end of that time, my hormones must have come back and switched back on because my pain came back with a vengeance, like so badly. So I went back to the uh, the gynecological doctor and I said, look, you have to do something. He said, Sky, you've had so much surgery and you've just had trauma surgery. Anything we do now will just be problematic. But I was desperate. I'm like, you have to at least go back in because you fixed it last time. So he went back in and what had happened was because he'd never seen that disease before, he took out what he thought was all of it, but left some of it. It then spread onto my bowel, my bladder, and my uterus. And that, on top of what was already left there causing problems, was now just causing like a massive problem. Now, I can't take anti-inflammatories or steroids or anything because it, it I don't have a stomach. So I ended up having to leave work. I was on a walking stick. I was taking 400, if you know, um, like OxyContin, this is the most massive dose doctors have seen. Uh, 480 milligrams in the morning, 480 at night, breakthrough of 60 milligrams, Valium of 40. I was on fentanyl patch on my arm of 170, changed every two days, not three days. I was in hospital having Botox injected in the spine, local anesthetic in the spine, more surgeries to relieve my hip being caught up. Um, Ketamine in like a heart unit, they were giving me ketamine to try and manage the pain. Um, And also because I was basically out of it from the drugs, stimulants and antidepressant, stomach medication, hormone replacement therapy. Plus, then I sat to inject to go to the toilet because it was causing, it was just this nightmare of of medications. And I'm only about 27, 28, 29. By the time I'm 29, I'm just like way over it. Anyway, I'm seeing professors at this time and they've then um, put me into chemically induced menopause. And with that, what I knew was my pain went. So it was like this nerve pain went down my face, down my arm, into two fingers, into two toes, down the back. Like I knew it like the back of my hand. Of course, I was a mess from everything I'd been through, but it stopped my pain. And I said, I can't be on any more drugs. Like if this is the answer, you have to give me a hysterectomy. Um, So they debated over it, but they had to get lots of other professors doctors to sign off because I was young and it wasn't emergency but they did it I went into like a really severe menopause because I had the like high estrogen levels and stuff but eventually after a year my whole body just did not want the pain medicate like that was in my system it was like you got to get rid of that so this is when things got really really bad so every time you I dropped some of the medications I would just start vomiting get dizzy um, have more problems, heart palpitations. I was then at um, showing like I had diabetes and so that was knocking me out. It just, all these problems kept happening, but I couldn't stay on them. I didn't want to. Like once you've got no pain, it's no, like it makes you really sick. But coming off them was making me sicker to the point I ended up like 37 kilograms going in about wow. the U. Everyone thought I wasn't going to make it. Every time I went in, more blood work was just, things were just not working properly in my body. And they're doing tests for general things and nothing was showing up. At this point, so I'm just about off all the medications, but 
it's like I had this dissociational break with reality. Now that's a whole story on its own, but basically I ended up in a psych unit. I had not, this is, I'm at 36 and a half years old. No, just after I was about 36 years old. So I basically spent at least the last 10 years in a bed. Before that, I was in and out of bed, but literally that time was hospitals, like New Year's hospitals, Christmas, like always in hospitals. So I'm basically thrown on the floor of a psych unit. They took all the medications off me. What I went through was unbelievable, but also it was like a sort of spiritual awakening at that time. It was whatever had happened. It was like the veil of reality had just, I was to see everything as it is. Um, came through that, came off the medications they put me in, was on no medications except some hormone replacement. Um, and I were, I was still very dissociated. Like a lot of my memory was missing. It only recently came back. Um, I worked for my brother-in-law. Um, I would go to the gym every day. I was a paleo at the time. Mum has limes and she was trying paleo. So it was basically like fruit, nut, seeds and a meat dish like at night. Um, and I did for all intensive purposes, well that year. If you saw photos, you would think I was really well. At the end of that year, I got shingles through the eye. I then could not walk or talk and they diagnosed me with something called FND, which is a functional neurological disorder. So basically the connection between the brain and the body just kind of wasn't happening. So I had to go to a neurological hospital for like 10 weeks, relearn to walk, talk, tie my shoelaces. But while this was going on, I had severe PTSD like literally there were two waves of reality going on there was what was going on and then this overlay of just it was horrible um at this time I went vegan so at this time I it was like this spiritual thing that kept resurfacing I did not I was I didn't want to eat anything with a face you know it, it didn't matter what so much the food looked like it was something I just and it was very hard to tell people when you're that sick in hospital but I managed to do it Coming out of the neurological thing, my PTSD was off the chart. Some days it'd be like two weeks where this FND PTSD, I could just stare at a wall and I wouldn't move. Like people would feed me, wouldn't sleep. It would go on for weeks. Anyway, I ended up in psychiatric units. Um, I, in that period of time, so in that period of time, it was eight visits, five acute visits, scheduled three times. One stint was for 10 months, didn't go home except for weekends and was like one-on-one -on -one care. It was like really intense. So I came out the end of this in a private hospital where when I was eating vegan, um, and I had, when I say private psychiatric hospital, they're like, I mean, they're cooking me like grills, tofu with herbs and like ragouts. everything's balanced. I've got my own nutritionist who comes twice a week and, she, and my blood work had stopped making protein. So with everything else going on, um, my blood, my body was now, um, not making proteins either. Uh, um, and the uh, uh, nutritionist said, you know, you could have some more nuts and seeds, but you, truthfully, you're eating everything right. Anyway, I get home and I'm on some medications which can keep me like alert for short periods of time. But basically this FND thing is, is, is all there with the PTSD. So I start drinking to cope. Within three to four months, I'm back in hospital. My liver started to fail um, and... I had to stay in hospital for like three weeks. And um, after this, my parents said, you can't, we're, you know, you're done. We're done with you. You know, you have to look after yourself now. So basically I stayed in hotels for a few months and then I, a family member helped me get my first place. So during this time, I'm still vegan. So with everything going on, I don't even know how I survived this as in like when you're that dissociated, how I didn't just accidentally even walk in front of a car. Like you're just not with it. So I'm in my own place and I'm too sick to cook. So I just eat the food raw. And I start to notice for the first time, I actually am moving my body normally and hanging some washing out. And then... I like make myself some dry roasted sweet potato, basil, tomato, garlic, just in the oven, pull it out, eat it. And I can't get up for four days, tachycardia, heart problems, digestive problems, urinary tract problems, everywhere's problems. Just eat the food raw again and I'm back up. And then I steam some cauliflower and I'm like, the same sort of thing happened. Um, and so I'm like, Sky, what are you willing to do? And I couldn't really read at this time. So I, I, 
could look at pictures. So I went on Instagram and saw there were people called raw vegans and these beautiful pictures of things. I'm like, okay, that's what I do. And the only rule I had was the food had to be raw. So like, um, like things like kimchi or like fermented foods, nuts or seeds, they seem to be fine. It was if you put something cooked in my body, I just did not function. So within six weeks, all my symptoms were gone. Um, within one year, my blood work is almost perfect. I cured my anemia and when I had my stomach and duodenum and all that removed, they said for the rest of your life, you will have to have iron infusions and B12 shots, which I did at the, the time all the time. Um, and then with the raw foods, I cured my anemia um, and it took another year when I went back because I only went once a year for a blood test. I stopped doctors altogether. And the my blood work this time last year was perfect. So it took two years for my liver to recover. Um, but all my symptoms went within six weeks. So that's my healing journey. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Because when you think about that like decades of those symptoms and struggle and then six weeks gone it's it's amazing um so you said you said there uh you've had your stomach and duodenum which is part of your small intestine removed um yeah. how does you know you don't have to go into this but for anyone they may be curious like, how does that actually work so you eat food and then does it just go straight so yeah can you just elaborate so there is a little bit of the stomach that's left yeah. which is just kind of dropped over time so that would slow it a bit but basically the food does not ha go into the stomach where the acid is and makes the chyme or like vomit type stuff it just goes straight into the intestines um and the basically the body then breaks it down from there um which it does but i do obviously have a problem getting nutrition which doesn't seem to happen with raw foods and once you start it took two years to get juices into my system like to fully get juices in um, cause I had something called dumping syndrome where if you have like a sweet juice and it dumps straight into the small bowel, it goes straight through the wall, all the sugar. And it's like, you get heart palpitations, and, but that over time, once again, calmed down, like your body can just adapt. Um, but I did notice when I first woke up from those surgeries, the one thing I struggled with and never ate much of was meat. Um, it was harder than anything else to, um, to get through. Like it was easier to eat a hundred grams of chips. It always, what I noticed when I woke up was, um, it based on weight, like a hundred grams of chips is like a big bag. Like if someone, if someone ate a huge bag of chips, they'd be like, I'm kind of done. I'm not having dinner. Like, but if you had a hundred grams of meat and then you're like having dessert and you know, it's, it's kind of, that's what I noticed is you, you know, it's, it was weight really played a part. Um, but it seemed to be much better on the raw foods for me. Mm, amazing. Yeah. Do you feel like it's because of the, enzymes in the food whereas obviously when we cook food it, we have to produce our own digestive enzymes do you f i do i also feel like if you think of like fruit straight off a tree um not even juice like a cucumber for example is each little cell that goes into you is is balanced already right it's that little hydration sac is held in like this perfect equilibrium and it's like little bubbles that can go across like the easiest way with everything. Like, as you said, the enzymes, I think the, uh, like the electromagnetic energy of food is something that's not really considered. Uh, but someone also brought up the fact that cooked food can have like a leukocytosis response on, on the body and in a, a healthy person, that's fine. But if you're that sick, you want to limit anything that causes any sort of response. What, the naturopath and doctor are saying now is that it was MCAS, like a mast cell activation syndrome. Um, and that makes sense, but it was just extreme how it would always end up in some organ type in my body. And my, once you removed something, I would do well for a while and then it'd pop up somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. So, and in terms of your memory, I've heard you talk about you you lost your memory as well and then you you have memories coming back do you feel like you fully regained that or are you still uncovering new memories sure so i could the whole time i got well i could tell you just about everything that had happened right but after i did a big juice cleanse so at the end of last year i got shingles this year i had these viruses and i just had a test and my iron was zero now this past year i did high fruit so the first couple of years i did 
massive amounts of greens and veggies. And this past year, I tried to do the fruit thing and I ended up with no iron and I ended up with um, shingles. So when I, I couldn't get up until I juiced. I juiced and within four days, I was up. Um, and I juiced for 47 days and then I tried to eat again and then I'd juice for another two weeks. It didn't really work. I'd try food again. So all up was about 80 days. When I started eating again, I'd be walking along. Most of the times I was out in nature, massive chunks of memory would come back, but they had feeling and emotion in them. I didn't realize my emotions were not in my memories. Like I could recall things more like robotically, um, but it's after that juicing, not even juicing, it was afterwards, um, these like emotionally, I could go, I remember that. And it has like a feeling with it. Nothing had a feeling. And I think I was very like blocked off. Um, it also, those, when those feelings came back, a huge part of me came back. I don't think we realize how much of our, who we are is in our emotional memory. I guess people don't need to think about it really. Um, and I would love to say it's all back, but I feel like I'm really embracing the healing journey now. I think the dramatic jump of when I got well was just so magical. You think you're perfect. Like the difference in six weeks even is unbelievable. Like it's, it's unbelievable. So when you get to a point where you kind of realize that the healing can sway a bit and you've still got work to go on, I feel like I'm in that realm. And to be honest, I didn't know my memories were missing. Um, So when they came back, I was like, whoa, Ooh, and these feelings and then I'd come back and the way I perceived people and interpreted the world shifted massively when they, those memories came back mm. yeah because it's amazing like now to me it seems like you have such a positive outlook and such high energy like how have you are there any things you do to keep yourself so upbeat and positive like any practices or mindset shifts or anything like that So what I don't think people understand or I probably don't talk about as much because I wouldn't have reached it without the raw foods is a lot of that time from I end up in the psychiatric hospital the first time is every second I could, I had my feet in the dirt. I had my looking up at the sky. I'd be out out the front of the hospital in a park with, with the flowers. I felt the strength of nature. And once that would disappear, but I felt when I went, paleo that year I was very connected to nature um you know it was like that string um as I went on to the raw foods um I literally spent 16 to 17 maybe more hours a day because I didn't sleep for brackets of like three month periods sometimes and when I say I didn't sleep I would black out for like 40 minutes most nights but but that's it so a lot of the time I worked out a lot of these lights and these these frequencies and being around anything metal metal was giving me seizures I was so sensitive like my whole body was just shook so I worked out that no shoes on I probably look crazy but I probably was at the time I just had be outdoors even at the start when I first could get up from the raw foods I'd literally be in a park all day under a tree move out in the sun for a bit I and that healed me like as in like now when I get sick I can only get to a certain level if I get like the shingles like and I juice it will get me up but I can't heal or connect to me until I spend a good deal of time in the ocean out in the sun with the moon um they're like my it's like my religion really uh it's what's pull it's really what's pulled me through um I spend a lot of time still alone I'm I'm really good at interacting on the computer because that's what I think I did most of the time. I was sick all those years, you know. I would game or I would connect, talk to people online. So that's very normal for me. But I reset my energy a lot. Um, I don't let. I think I realized when I lived by myself finally because I always had carers how much our energy shifts around other people or events. So hmm. they're kind of a couple of things that I um, exercise also makes me feel amazing, but. Um, yeah Hmm. yeah definitely i think it must be it must be amazing now to kind of have that energy and vitality and be able to socialize because i imagine like you say you're probably still doing it before but you probably felt like a shell of yourself um and i like what you touched on about the nature and exercise and things like that because oftentimes we want to say like it's just exclusively one thing that makes us healthy 
But I think it's the combination uh, combination of factors for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it definitely is. I feel like the raw food, like I always say that like things like yoga and like um, exercise, the sun, nature, swimming in the ocean were always there. But I couldn't really feel their true power until I had the raw foods mm. in my system. Um, they're, of course, always there. But once that got in me, then I could, like, connect. They just amplify the whole system. Mm. That's how I like to think of it. Yeah, definitely. Such a great tool. Like, this, um, yeah, the, the healing powers are profound. And it's, it's um, I'm curious because... I've heard you say, like, at the start, obviously, you were more high on, like, greens and nuts and seeds and, thing, and things. Then you went all through. Uh, and that, because I know it changes based on, like, what you can handle and your body's needs. Um, where do you currently yeah. kind of sit at the moment? Like, what, what's working best for you? Sure. So, I actually only had nuts and seeds. So, I worked out when I first went raw, it was something to do with the vibrations of food. So, this girl posted on her story, just take green beans cook one and put it on your counter and put it next to one that's not cooked and the cooked one write down what you see and I couldn't really write so I'm like okay I see floppy gray mushy and then I like looked and then look at the other one so I looked at the raw one I see structured bright alive and I realized that most of my life when I've been looking at things I am getting some sort of sense as to how they will make me feel just by the words and how I feel and I did realize that like the bright carrots or the mangoes or the avocados were like much brighter. And that was what really guided me at that primitive type level I was at. Um, so I let go of like, first off, I stopped the smoking, the drinking, the um, the coffee. And that, that was pretty much straight away, like in the first couple of weeks of, you know, discovering, you know, the raw foods. And then I think it was about two months in, I let go of nuts and seeds um, and I just, you know, I still have avocado and, and coconut. That was kind of it. Then I let go of like spices. Not that I was having much. I was using a bit of turmeric powder and paprika. And then I let go of salt and pepper. So for two years, I did more kind of like salad vegetables, but still some fruit. And then I kind of maybe a year and a half to two years. And then I did more fruits. I really, I guess once my brain could read, it was like, you're supposed to do fruits to heal is what I thought. But I don't know whether I'm either ready for that or that's for me right now. I've had a bit of a rocky year when my iron would have been low all of this year. And I literally was juicing sometimes 10 liters a day. And it makes sense. It's just like someone giving you a drip of, of liquids, of electrolytes. Once I had that infusion, my whole, like I, I'm now, because I ha I'm really bad with having things put in my system, at this present time, I'm kind of supporting, my iron level straight away would have gone right up and then it's got to just, you know, sink into the system, get your hemoglobin up. So I'm kind of supporting the drug that went in, if that makes sense at the moment, where I'm kind of getting up, I'm doing so much less juice, like one juice. And then I might have another juice at might maybe like 10 o'clock in the morning. And then I might have um, at lunchtime maybe a bit more juice, but maybe some like cucumber because I'm very mcas at the moment or histamine intolerant, like from flaring up. Um, so I will have, yeah, maybe some cucumber. Um, I will in the afternoon, more than likely, if I have not have another juice at dinner, I will just have... Um, a light salad but truly compared to the calories and intake I've taken in which is amazing when I think about it I ate so much and I don't even have a stomach especially when it got to the fruits and stuff at this present moment I'm kind of feel like I'm just supporting that what I've had to you know have infused um, so it's yeah it'll probably change again once everything settles back down mm, yeah definitely and I know you coach people um on their journeys as well have, have you found the inclusion of like greens and maybe like um maybe some seeds and things like that is beneficial like long term 100 percent. so sorry i didn't mention when i put the seeds and nuts back um i was craving them big time when i was when i had shingles i was basically on grapes and watermelon for two months couldn't get anything in my whole system was not good 
Um, and then I ended up starting like grapes and watermelon were my safe foods that were good. I could juice, but also I was having greens, massive amounts of green juices made such a difference. Also, um, a nut milk at night I was having all my juicing about by about day 15, just a small, um, hemp milk or walnut milk. And that my system took to like it loved. You could just see like my skin, my hair, everything felt much better. And I, in general, feel better, but I don't know a long-term raw vegan who doesn't swear by a good green juice, like the hit of the greens. Um, and I've just been talking to people actually, because I, when I, before I had the iron infusion, I was literally my, I um, wrote up my schedule actually, which was I juice green juice all day and then would have like at night, like a salad that had like I thought my body was missing a lot of protein, but it were, it couldn't metabolize sugar before I had the infusion. I could, every time I had sugar, I was quite ill. Um, and just having like a salad with nuts or um, mushrooms, something like that at night, and that went on for months. It's only been recently I've had to shift, but I notice that we survive better on this planet, we, where the planet's at, having the grounding, like if we, if I'm because I've been to went to Bali and you're living like on a beach eating fresh food from a tree you're not indoors much if shoes are off you're in you know a swimming costume you probably could do a lot of fruit tropical fruits durian was helping me there type thing but here I find all of this stuff kind of very irritating on the body very disrupting and you can ground a lot better in kind of the toxins of the planet if you've got nuts seeds and greens is what i have learned and i've seen in others as well just politely jumping in to share that if you want my exact workout routine that took me from 130 pounds after a lot of cleansing and fasting to 156 pounds over the course of about six months now then you can find that top link in the description and that's completely free but anyway enjoy the rest of the conversation peace and love mm, yeah definitely i agree i think yeah perhaps in in a tropical paradise with like perfectly tree ripe fruit and ma maybe yes. you'd get adequate nutrition who knows but yeah I, I agree fully um do you feel like it was mi certain minerals you were lacking for the hair and the skin and things like that so i actually lost all my hair before i went raw and the bits that were still there like was like little wispy bits were mostly gray and when I started eating the raw foods, my hair, you notice know, straight away, and especially if I'd stayed on the seeds and nuts, it probably would have come back even stronger. But that in the combination of the sun, it just started to go blonde. Like I haven't dyed my hair. I'm like, I don't even have, like if I get sick, I'll notice a couple grays come through. But then if I get back well again, they just grow out and it's like probably part somewhere along there. But it's fascinating how, health can give you um like better hair and nails but definitely i've noticed a difference in the growth of my hair um and the strength since the nuts and um the greens also something like uh sea moss gel i was having a lot of i've given it a break just at the moment i'm very light where this all goes in the system but i found that's probably because i don't like you i've never used a supplement um or i tried the herbs and they sent off um like my mcas um problems so I, yeah, I find st sticking as natural as I can, but using the variety, like there's a whole variety of like raw foods out there. Um, and even if it's, you have to juice it or only little bits, I always think it's better to get in whatever you can to support you on your journey on this planet. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've seen, seen some of your recipes and I know you create some things that people rave about. So if you, oh. did you have a personal favorite, if you had to only make one recipe. It's my three ingredient bread right now um so a lot of i think when i first went raw i was so excited because i never cooked or never made food and i was making all these fancy recipes and um like i've got lots of recipe free recipes up on my website and in my community but i noticed the common thing was people want quick and easy like you can always add to it right you can always add onion to your bread or onion powder or make it sweet with maple syrup but they want the foundation so i knew I liked the buckwheat but it was kind of like a bit dry and I knew I liked like this omega-3 bread that I made which is too fatty so I combined it and made this like fluffy bread it only takes like four hours so I like that with a salad and I find it easier to digest than trying to get just the seeds in you know it's kind of like whipped up and then warmed a little so that's probably my favorite um 
right now, but I'm a, I'm a bit of a sucker for like zoodles as well. Like I love a good zoodle bowl <laughs> or just even green salads, right? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think that's the beauty of it. Like you say, there's such a diversity. There's a wide range of foods. And yeah, I think for a lot of people, if it helps them on the lifestyle, I say definitely make recipes that you enjoy. Um, you, you mentioned nut milks as well earlier. Um, how do you, yes. how, how would someone go about making a nut milk or a seed milk? Sure. So first off, I'll say when I first started juicing, I'd thrown out my juicer because it gave, made me mad because I got a sun meme or bre- I think it was Breville juicer. Um, and every time I bought produce, I'd look at, at the side where it comes out, you know, the, um, the pulp and most of the fruit and juice would still be there. So I stopped using it and went moldy and I ended up throwing it out because it was just, you spend too much on produce and you keep putting it through and it doesn't work. So when I discovered that um, the lighter foods um, worked for me, um, I ordered, so I didn't want to order a juicer yet. I used a nut milk bag to juice and it's quite simple to like blend watermelon and just, you know, um, push it through a nut milk bag, pineapple. Greens are a bit of a pain in the butt. Um you know, but I did it. Um, the nut milk bag. So if you want to make, I do share reels on it as well. Like I used fresh coconut milk, um, fresh coconut water. And I would use, I think it's like probably like half a cup of hemp seeds with that. I can't remember the exact recipe because I always eyeball things. Um, and then just blend it up and pour it through a nut milk bag. Oh my God. It's like having a milkshake. You can use water. Um, some people would use water in a date, um, but you can do it with any nuts, really. Um, a lot of people always ask me, do you soak your nuts? And I, I'm the sort of person who's never noticed like a massive difference if the nuts are soaked. I don't think I have a lot too much at a time, but, you know, do what suits you. If you want to soak them, soak them. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've never really experimented with it. I've heard some people say it makes them a bit more digestible um, when you soak them, but who knows? I don't know that, like you say, if you've never experienced that firsthand. It's, um, it's yeah. hard to say, isn't it? It will. I'm really sensitive. Like, mm-hmm. like, so I eat something and straight away I'm like, I can't. This is not for me. And I've never been like, whether it's soaked or not soaked, notice like a massive thing. But every, it's, everyone's different, right? You do what works for you. It's just a lot of people like, I didn't soak the nuts, so I didn't make that for dinner. And I'm like, just make it anyway. <laughs> it's okay. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Do you have any tips? Um for people who might want to start, maybe they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, so they want to start eating more sure. raw foods or go fully raw. But where would you suggest like starting? So I started on disability payments, like disconnected from everyone, with a chopping board, a knife, and a vegetable peeler. And I loved it because it was just like, what I did, this is what I did, is I gave myself my parameters, which were you can eat anything that's raw, and for me, that's what works for me at the start. You work out what's going to work for you at the start. Like give yourself the rules um, of where you're going to work to the point where I started thinking, well, what is it I grew up with that mum would make me salad wise that I liked? So think of flavors that you liked. And mine was like avocado, mango, chili, lime. So I put them in like the green salad with some and like you'd use the vegetable peeler to make like noodle type things. I also gave myself permission because I knew I had to stay raw to wake up at like, you know, go to, go to bed and then at 10 o'clock at night, get back up and have peanut butter and, and nut butters, you know, or avocados, like, because my goal was not to be perfect. It was just to be raw. So I think it's really important. You like say where you want to sit and what you're going to do to stop yourself defaulting because eventually that stage passes. Um, but you know, I think when you first start, you're not the same as you are three years or 10 years or 20 years. Um, you've got to just use all you can is what I say. You know, if you see something in a shop that says it's raw, bring it into the bunch. Like you get yourself up onto it. Once you are, you can discover what works for you. I find that a better focus than focusing on, you know, I'm going to eat watermelon for three weeks um, to cure something. Because what you end up find happens is people who push through, the longer you push through, have a rebound effect. Um, and I have only experienced it after I did grapes for 30, 21 days. And when I did the juice cleanse is the cravings and the pull to go and eat things that you haven't thought about for years are crazy. So how people do 
like start this journey and they're like, I'm going to do so 200 days or whatever they go into. It's you kind of better off to just like incrementally get up um, slowly because I find that for me was the most sustainable and it's worked. It's just evolved. Mm, yeah, definitely. I agree. I think a gradual transition for most people is definitely more sustainable. I think maybe there's some yeah. who can be a bit more extreme, but yeah, I agree. I think if you look at the vast majority, I think a gradual transition, it's going to be more enjoyable as well. It's not going to feel like you're depriving yourself. Um, it's, yeah. Good. I think that's a big part of your healing as well is how you'll feel. Like I know I knew I was doing the right thing based on how I felt. Like there was no other way to know. So, you know, a lot of people are like, did you get detox? And I'm like, no, I literally woke up every day and felt a bit better. And then I do my day and be outdoors. And the next day I wake up and I'd be a bit better. Um, and I, that's what guided me. Um, so uh, I was kind of shocked when I, you know, connected to people that it's supposed, a lot of people had this horrible experience. Yes, there were times where I'm like, oh my God, I'd love to just grab something, you know, order some Chinese, vegan Chinese or something. And that's when I'd like make myself some noodles with some like tamari or something to get through. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah. Do you think that's important for people like um if they have cravings or like yeah they really want like this old food like oh i want a curry or something do you think it's important to have like healthy alternatives like did that keep yes. you going a hundred percent because you want what you want to do this for life and when you think you only get one life you're supposed to enjoy it um and then you start teaching your body it can have nice things like even if you're doing like uh, you know fruits and just greens and you get you because know, i kind of feel like when you get on it you do eat very simply and we're not eating like curries and pizzas and nachos every night but when it comes up i still honor that and you know when what that looked like at the start was what have i got on hand right i'll make some some with a vegetable peeler like some carrot noodles some sesame seeds and a bit of soy sauce um to get through that um like whatever craving that was, that was what I did because you really, it's a mind, something called a mind game, but it's really like a, a battle of the mind, a retraining of the mind and, and making yourself feel safe. Like you can heal and be on this and always have something to eat. Mm, definitely. That you enjoy. Mm, that, that's a huge thing. Enjoyment as well. Like you've got to be eating foods that you actually enjoy because it's no good if yeah. there's, like one isolated nutrient or something like that in one food, but <laughs> you really hate it, then, yeah. And I think you not liking it is your body telling you. So, like, for example, mm. I go off, like, sometimes I can have watermelon juice um, and it'll taste amazing. And, like, just before I grabbed it, it tastes so sickly sweet. And to me, that's an indicator my body isn't going to process it. The sugar's very well right now. And we were so disconnected thinking that we're supposed to be craving hamburgers or a beer at the pub, papai, but really we're supposed to be listening to when you have, sometimes I can have CMOS gel, especially when I was low in iron and literally I would really enjoy it. And then other times like, like now that I'm doing a lot better, it's kind of like, yeah, I'll have a little bit, but I don't need as much. And I think it's really about honoring that, like not forcing through, um, you know, I, I, I totally respect that some people, you know, might be unwell with like a cold or a flu and they want to just up there, you know, let their body heal a little better. They do fruit for a few days or whatever they do. But pushing through that for too long, I think you really kind of, for me, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, a lot of people I work with are very traumatized from detox as well, like that they for years push through and, and there's a real rebound effect for a long period after um doing extreme healing mm. modalities mm, yeah definitely i think yeah anything obviously extreme is very subjective but anything yeah a lot that's what i know it's a lot a lot of things that are like fatty or really extreme or anything anything like that like you said it, like you said earlier it kind of has like a rebound effect um and yeah we're in it for the long game we, we want to enjoy our years as best as we can as long as we can like um yeah what 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 do you because you must have immense gratitude now because you've had you've had all these years of you know maybe not feeling like your your full self what do you put your energy into now like what what are you feeling called to to do share and help people so i find 
when I was sick all those years, what held me on was that I was going to get through it if I could get through it and no one else was going to suffer like I did. Like whatever got me well from that sick, I was going to share with the world. So I have, especially at the moment, like I find when I go through things like this iron dropping and I, I share in that space, it helps a lot of people, helps a lot of people. Like um, just talking about it helps a lot of people. Most like sharing helps people. Um, and my story has a lot of power in it as well. So that gives people a lot of hope and confidence. Like I feel like some of the people I've helped heal have healed on the basis that they've given up hope that they're so sick and they'll never find an answer. And then there's somebody who was a sick or sicker and it gives hope. So a lot of the first couple of years were just about self-love. So literally all I had to do every day was love me to the best capacity. I didn't even have to go anywhere until I felt I'd loved myself enough to the point that I don't want to come at somebody like I have to go to a family event today half full and then I kind of that energy can rock off everybody else is wait till you're well um you know and then come and bring good good like love and and joy and happiness like and that love is like the way I speak to myself like sometimes when I go through hard times I will just lay in bed you know a lot of people might uh, watch TV and things I'll literally just keep telling myself that I love myself or put some music on and it might be a romantic song but I talk to myself through it and you have to understand this only came about about three to four weeks into raw foods when I was connected to nature I was up more I was eating more raw foods and I was out in the sun and I was eating a salad and I was like there's no bad words or thoughts in my head anymore um, I'm living alone so there's no other type of chatter um, and that was that aha moment where I said, Sky, you've said you love you to yourself more times in the past week, two weeks, three weeks than you have in your entire life. It was like that self-love is what the raw foods and nature really represents. Like when you do something which feels good, you know, in the act of creating the salad or putting the fruit bowl together and then you eat it and you have gratitude and you feel good. And then afterwards, you, that st- you start to take that energy where you go. So you start to come at things with love. And if it doesn't have love, because you're putting in yourself like love energy, you just, you can't stay in that field. You have to like live your truth. Mm. So a huge part of like that, those first years was self-love. And I feel like it's evolved into now where um, I guess I have trust, especially with my, my audience and the people that are around me now, even though it's through a computer is, you know, is that I like to share um, more and it's not so just me focused. And I think people should really take, whether it's a year, I mean, mine was an extreme case, but at minimum of like three months away from everything you know to find yourself. And people are like, I can't, I've got work, I've got kids. I'm like, imagine what you can give them for the next 40 years if you can find yourself. Like, you know, and that's a hard thing for many people I think to do I was already disconnected you know I had the FND I'm living alone I'm you know at rock bottom um but it's like that it's like find yourself and then bring that energy where you go mm, definitely and what do people say now when you bring that energy like if you do you ever see like old friends or family or people like that and I, I do I do they it's funny when I first like when I because I when I first went out, I went out more, a lot more because I wanted to reconnect to people and everyone had seen me in the past. Not that I ever went out much because I was always sick, but I'd still have like a glass of wine or two glasses of wine or, you know, there were stages when I was younger, I'd go out and just try and numb pain as well. Um, they said, you're a lot more fun. You bring a lot more energy. Um, I also don't stay as long at events. Like people, I think most events you go to still kind of drink or like mostly drink. Um, and so you find the first two hours, you bring your energy and you, they, people think you're there the whole night anyway. <laughs> you bring a lot of energy wherever you go. Um, but I'm very blessed that because it healed me in such a dramatic way, I never had any of that like, oh, is this the right diet for you? Is this people like whatever you're doing, you just do it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's great. Do you, what, what do you do though if, um, if you go out, just say like, to a restaurant or to anything like that because a lot of people they say like I could do it but 
I want to have a social life or something like that. Do you have any like tips for people? So first off, on my website, I've created a page. The first year when I went out a lot, I take photos of what I what I made, um, what I made, what I ate, and mm-hmm. how I got to it. I've got a whole page on how I order. So basically, I if I know I'm going somewhere, I will call ahead, and usually it's for a birthday. I'm not like someone who's out all the time, you know, a special occasion. And they're happy to, um, you know, cater for me. But on a basic level, you go to a menu um, and you look for the garden salad, right? Whatever that is. Now, your options are to look at other dishes and some might have an avocado, pomegranate, um, coriander, and you bring some pine nuts. You just say when you get there, I bought some pine nuts or you just sprinkle them on. Um, So it's kind of like creating your own or you bring your own dressing and just get the garden salad. Um, that's a good one. A lot of places I go to around here cater for me. Um, a place creates all these raw dishes. Uh, another one, um, will just make salads. It depends like the luck of the draw, but the best ones I find are like the cheap ones at clubs because we have pretty fresh produce in Australia. Um, and the clubs have quite cheap, big salads. Like they've got, whereas fancy restaurants have quite small salads. But when it comes to socializing, you find you become the center of, whatever's going on so when I go out I'm the one that's kind of glowy and shiny um, and everyone's interested in in what the person that's glowy and shiny is doing and has to say and what they're eating and then you leave the restaurant and everyone's like oh I'm so full I'm tired oh and they're a bit tipsy and I'm like well I'm gonna go for a run or I'm gonna go to the park like it's a different dynamic you also take in a lot of like architecture better conversation you stay for a shorter period and you just enjoy the company and then you go it's about reframing it um Hmm. to suit you know you i mean for my birthday on once it was like one year rule i went into like an expensive restaurant with all my friends and i just got a salad they got all fancy food but i wanted to go and go to a nightclub and like dance because i'd been dancing at a learning to dance and I danced for hours and hours. Like that was my, you know, I, I guess it wasn't like there was lights and stuff. I just, I guess, wanted to experience that. So it's about shifting it from being like, you know, does this place have good food to does this place have good company? Mm, yeah, 100%. So can you do like everything you want to do now? Like dance, run, like all of that? Like, Yeah. So I couldn't really ever run. Even when I was a kid, I was never a runner. I was a better swimmer. But now I can run. What I found when I got on the raw foods was if I keep applying the same principles I applied to the raw food, and that is you just keep showing up and doing the best you can each day, just chip away a little bit each day, is I could do anything. Like I swam the first, it wasn't even raw for, I was only raw for six months. No, it would have been about eight months. And winter started and I swam in the ocean all through winter with no wetsuit, no goggles, no hat, just because I wanted to experience it. Like um, it was, you know, things like that. And then I was doing dancing and now I do Pilates and running. And um, whereas in the past, even I think as a, as a child, though I was a pretty sick child all the time, is if you did anything, you were still kind of burnt out a lot. You'd, you'd have this like cap with this. If you keep showing up, you just keep getting a little bits better. Mm, yeah I agree I think oftentimes we want to jump off the sofa and like run a marathon all in like a week <laughs> but yeah the gradual yes. approach yes 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 yeah I think gradual and that way you when, when you kind of see your gradual improvements it's quite motivating isn't it it's quite rewarding and fulfilling and yeah it's, yeah it's grounding in itself when you start to realize the pattern is over time and it's sustainable. Um, what I do notice is that kind of gets thrown out. So before I just had the iron infusion, I was craving, I hadn't had cacao before and I had it when I was in Hawaii with Jillian. And it didn't, not that I wanted it again, but when I got back, I noticed um, I craved it just a little bit in the morning because I had no heat, I was low in um, hemoglobin, but it throws off our perception when you stimulate yourself. Like when you get like, you're throwing out of whack like this natural way that we're supposed to, you know, it's really rewarding. Like it's really, re- I remember my first year raw, I had this big party, um, booked out a, you know, a room and had this big party. I was like, you know, every day I got up and it was just me, the food, nature, and I just did it. Like I was, you know, and that propels you into, you know, all of it. It's all part of the package. <laughs> Definitely. 
yeah um do you have any tips for people like uh getting enough produce um yeah like maybe time saving tips budget tips just just making it work like how do you, how do you personally get all sure. the food in so what I did when I, because I was on disability payments and I wasn't connected to my family at the start, um, is I realized that this food made me feel so good that I could see my potential in the future. Like if I shortcutted it, I would have kept in my past loop, like as in, you know, so I spent basically all, it wasn't the, like, it was like about $40 a day at the start. Uh, maybe a bit less at the start, maybe like $30 a day. And the rest of my money went to rent and to, um, and I, I pay, paid a phone bill. But I realized that if this could make me feel this good, imagine what I could do, like my full potential. None of it was, um, uh, all of it was conventional. None of it was organic. Um, I just bought what I, I bought what I craved and required every few days so that I would stay on it. That was my goal at the start. Um, as for che- getting it cheap in Australia, I don't know whether you, the rest of the world has the same as we do here. So a, a tip is if you go to farmer's markets is go towards the end. Um, that doesn't always apply. Like where I get it, there's nothing at the end, but some of the places um, still have produce at the end. We have local fruit markets that just sell fruit. Um, and they, if you ask them, they'll have stuff going rotten. If you say, not that it is rotten, but it can't, you got stuff at the end of the day, if you go at the end of the day, just is there things that you're, because they throw so much out. So that's a really good idea. Eat seasonally, that can be so cheap. Um, but at the start, I, though I did eat, like I was we were going, it was winter when I started and we're then going into spring is I still, if it, even if it wasn't in season, if I wanted it at the start I would still get it it was like I knew how I I knew how I was going to get me to stick to it so that's kind of like the gist of it or grow your own also sprouts I was really I only started sprouting like three months ago and it's so easy and it's so cheap and it's like it's got so many nutrients minerals my fave is like lentil sprouts I don't even buy like sprouts I buy like the bag of lentils and just sprout them they're like five dollars and it's got sprouts everywhere so there's a good way to add um yeah mm, definitely. like cheap to salads and stuff mm-hmm. yeah i've heard a lot about sprouts recently i think it's definitely gonna have to be something i try um i know there's some people who who say like they're they're a lot more nutrient dense um and yeah, yeah like you said they're quite they're, they're quite easy to grow like i think lentil sprouts are yeah, some of the so easiest i was really they? so that's the thing is i it's, I guess that same principle where slow and steady wins the race is I never bring something in which is going to become stressful because I know from my past what happens to stressful events. They either bring it, I bring a, bring a chaos or I end up just leaving it. So I was at a time where I'm like, got the sprouting jars. I only usually have two going. And I was buying like the little sprout bags to start, um, like fenugreek, um, lentils. I bought some broccoli sprouts, I think too. Um, and I've just found, discovered, I thought I'll try. So what you do with any sprout is you just rinse them off in, in a jar. Like you don't even have to get the mesh jar over the top. Just put them in a jar of water and then drain it out after, you know, overnight. You had them in overnight, drain it out, leave them. And that day just water them one more time. And then the next day just water them twice a day. Sometimes I forget and only water them once a day, but they'll just sprout. Like, um, and I, as I said, I don't buy... Um, anything I just I'm taken to the lentils because they find them so satisfying like when you've got a salad and you want something a bit heavier um, I find them really good but they're quite easy I'd love to get into like microgreens but I think you've got to have a bit of a setup going on Mm. Um, so I'm not at that level yet but yes sprouts are real easy even if you just grab a jar and try I find chickpeas are the one thing out of all the raw foods that's my one thing I really can't digest um yeah like really can't digest so even sprouted they're not great for me Mm. everything else seems to be fine Mm, yeah i've heard um i interviewed chris kendall a couple of days ago and he said chickpeas are a bit they're quite hearty but and yeah they don't digest as well yeah Yeah. i love chris chris great guy he's so lovely yeah (laughs) yeah he's definitely it seems like a lot of people in this movement without generalizing they just seem to be very upbeat and energetic and 
or certainly the ones I gravitate towards. Um, do you find with so obviously you're very sensitive your system the lentils and things yeah. digest fine like sprouts yeah so i am very sensitive and i find different times different things digest differently but if something is i really haven't struggled with anything except i can't eat too much cauliflower but it even feels like over time, if I start, I call it microdosing. So if I want to put something in, I only use a really small amount. And you can go really small, like invisibly small, and build up the microbiome. But even like broccoli and cauliflower, I don't have that often. So when I have, if I have too much, it's it's funny. But I feel like I could build up on that. I feel like everything really um, digests fine if I'm having it and build up to it. But yeah, those the sprouted chickpeas are just the one that like one that I can't but everything else seems to be mm. fine of course fruit is like the easiest um but it doesn't always make me feel that great so like mm. a green juice green juice is always great definitely and yeah that, that's important um with the, mi the microbiome aspect because sometimes when people want to transition to this lifestyle like maybe fruit or greens don't agree with them initially but that doesn't mean fruit's yes. bad or greens are bad it's just maybe at that time you're microbiome's not not quite adapted to it fully yeah well i kind of think with what happened with me is oh, it yeah, was a progressive like mm. it was like the paleo and then the vegan and i was already like sort of noticing that like the lighter it was cooked or just have the the the, mm. the stick of celery or carrot or whatever it just evolved um it was and i do believe if you were eating a diet that had you congested like you were already blocked up and you kind of weren't eating you know if you eat if i don't know it could go wrong you know i can see how it could go wrong but you know it's all about you know even for me if i've just you know summer and you're doing mostly fruits and you go and have a big vegetable meal it's still it's not your microbiome's like not all prepared for it 100 percent. yeah just quickly um you mentioned conventional you had all conventional compared to organic how did you how do you personally find that being in australia is there like a difference for you or? so we, well everyone knows how i healed myself um like very very quickly so the only time i noticed a difference was how i got into organic was i was doing i had a tooth problem and i would had read dr moss and then i read um oh i've forgotten her name right now but the, she wrote the great cure um the book oh. the great cure yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, no good I, it's not coming to me. So I got on the um, someone Brant, Ju someone Julie oh, anyway. Yeah, I think it might be Julie or Julia or something. Yeah, I don't know. something. Okay, so I got onto the grapes and I was eating only grapes, and within four days I was doing so much better. Mind you, grapes have I think it's called quercetin in them, which is really good. They're really low irritant. They're really good if you have allergies like MCAS and histamine. I didn't know it at the time, but now that I do know it, it makes sense why grapes are a great food for me. So I'm, um, I'm, yeah, no, I'm up in the grapes, and I'm four days in, and my tooth's better. Eleven days in, I have like this nervous twitch thing going in my eye. Can barely concentrate. I'm kind of all over the shop. And it's not people, I know people are thinking it's going to be detox and I'm like, it's not, these are neurological symptoms, like specifically. And I started getting this feeling to try organic, like this, you know, I was eating conventional and I'm um, even the girl that I bought, buy them off said, is, aren't you worried about the sulfur? I'm like, no, 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 I eat conventional all the time. I'm fine. Anyway, I got onto the, the organic four hours later, all the neurological symptoms had gone. Um, because grapes are like on the dirty dozen because of the skin, right? Mm. But they're apparently also sprayed in sulfur. Um, if you have MCAS or something, that's not great. Anything like that is not great. But So I then transitioned across to strictly organic. From that point, I was like, I am, am I this sensitive? So I was at the farmer's markets. I would go to the, the organic place. Now I sit in a bit of everything. Like I go once a week to get... I get biodynamic. He basically picks it on Wednesday and we get it on Saturday and it's spray free biodynamic. So organic isn't always sprayed free, but not that that makes a difference. It's amazing produce. But if I need to get something during the week, like coconuts, I'm not frenetic that, you know, they're obviously got stuff on like they're not, you know, or if I need to get some, I'm going to make some wraps and I've got to grab some capsicums. I really just grab them from just conventional. Like I'm not, it's just my bulk, what I buy. And, 
I look at that, like when I started, I remember being like, if I look after myself, I will like organic will be like the reward you get for sticking to what you're doing. It wasn't the way for me. It was like, you'll get there one day once you work and you can do that. That's how I saw organic. But yeah, I'm very spoiled. Um, The produce in Australia is incredible. We are very blessed also for people looking for, you know, little things like in the supermarket, like the normal supermarket, we have like raw peanut butter, raw almond butter. When I was in America, oh my God, oh my God, I went into a health food store to get just raw nut in a in a jar. That's all I wanted. Oh my God, there's roasted nuts, there's dry roasted nuts, there's palm oil, there's honey, there's salt, there's cane sugar. There's I'm like, this is the health, this is America. It's this the place is massive. Ours are like little tiny ones. But even our supermarket has, like we, like when you're in their supermarkets in America, the smell from everything has so much stuff in it. In Australia, we don't have that. Even if you buy bread, it really only has a few things in it. There's not, oh, it would just, it blew my mind. (laughs) So in Australia, in general, we are very lucky. Mm, Definitely. Yeah, I quickly looked up that book. Um, It was by Joanna Brandt. (laughs) Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I missed the oh, mark no. a bit, but yeah, yeah. I think that is. I think that, that I've definitely noticed that with grapes. Um, when I went to Mexico, I had some, and I could tell they sprayed heavily, especially compared to the UK. So, would you say like Dirty Dozen is something maybe to maybe go organic yeah. with Dirty Dozen? Yeah. Yeah. So things that like or like carrots or this is like there's a few things they say. Like, if you can, definitely get organic. But if you, this is what I say, if you can, get what you can. And if you can't, um, just you're better off. I believe you're better off still eating the raw food in its form. If you need to get it, I found I didn't like the taste of the food after I put it in like bicarb and like those veggie washes and stuff. I'd rather just cop it. (laughs) just have a bit of bug and dirt you know yeah. i know it, it can't be helped um like i just it wasn't it wasn't for me and i think some people can get a little too fanatical um and in the sense that in the world we live there is good and bad to everything like literally i will post me eating a watermelon and people are like, it's poison there's no yeah. seeds and i like no i know poison i ate the poison for years and this ain't poison or like you know you everyone's trying their best and everyone sits at a different level um if you've picked watermelon over a pack of chips you're doing amazing exactly yeah yeah you just got to do the best you can with what you got and just be at That's peace it. be at peace no stress because <laughs> that'll cause you more That's harm it. And- yeah, I think also if you're judging other people, this is what happened. So I realized, not that I was said anything or was really judging them, but I was noticing I was like really like, so when I went raw, I went full raw for like two years. Like, I mean, nothing from a packet. The only thing that came from a packet was the sushi, which was raw nori, which I still hardly used. And I was like, all these people are calling themselves raw, but are they really raw? But I worked out that was something in me because I needed to go back to the nuts and the seeds. Like, it's good to, if you feel that, that pull towards telling someone that maybe you need a an unseated watermelon in your life maybe that's what's happening I don't know like I just think that I learned from me is if I ever start judging someone not that I'd say it but start thinking in that way it's more about me it's nothing to do with them Mm, absolutely yeah yeah often our external reality is like a reflection of our internal state it's it's amazing isn't it like the it's basically like a mirror. <laughs> it is. that It is. So that's why if you, when you first go raw, can have things in a really plain whole form, you start to come at the world and want its whole, natural, complete form. That's what happened to me is I noticed, because at the start I was I didn't have the blenders or the, um, the I couldn't afford food processes and stuff. I just like had, it was very simple and I was in nature. And then you start to see the world in more of its whole complete or you want to be whole and complete it's like symbolism even like the more you do whole and complete the more you will strive for always like whole and complete so Mm. not that that i mean blenders and and things are bad but it's just that was my experience because i use blenders all the time every day juices you know but at where i was at the start i noticed if um i really sat with my like where i was and these whole foods it really helped me see my world shape my world in a whole form Mm. 
Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, if you want, we'll finish with some rapid fire questions. Sure. I'm not, not sure if you've seen this before, but it's just the idea is just as quickly as you can. But obviously, feel free to elaborate if you need to. Cool. Sure. Uh, number one, what's your favorite fruit? At the moment or always? At grapes. I grapes. Will. It has to be grapes. It has to be grapes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. nice describe yourself in one word loving what is one book that everyone should read i think joanna brandt's book is one book that everyone should read or the mm -hmm. secret um i loved the secret but joanna brandt's book i yeah mm -hmm. i've gone about that <laughs> yes is that called the great cure or the great cleanse i can't remember yeah the exactly. great cure yeah. just i mean she fasted to an inch of a life and it didn't work yet she found hydration and and it's shifted things it's just yeah i think it's i think and what she did so mm -hmm. yeah what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received best piece of advice i ever had see, uh, received is from myself and that is to love me love me is the best advice nice what are three things that you can't live without Oh, raw food, the ocean, and talking. I guess the ocean is nature. So raw food, nature, and exercise. Mm. What's your greatest strength and what's your biggest weakness? I think my greatest strength is love. My greatest weakness is getting too heady and trying from the head instead of coming from like the love space mm. yeah do you believe i seem to destroy things when i do that <laughs> <laughs> how do you how are you kind of uh trying to lead more from the heart space and i let it flow naturally so it's all about the feels for me so if something feels good like getting dressed for running and then doing the run and then after the run is feeling good. But if I start to get anxious about it and then during it, I'm like, come on, Sky, you can do this, do it. I know you don't feel good. You're going to do it anyway. And afterwards you feel like you just got to go with your feels, you know? So that's when you should pull back and rest and listen to your body talk. And that's about how I got onto the raw foods as well is let it guide you based on how you feel. Like I even like the grapes. I love the grapes, not so much because they're the best tasting. They are amazing but also the way they make me feel. Um, I always go with that. That's how I stay in that like heart space. And But head tends to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in having a purpose? If so, what's your purpose in life? I do, but I don't believe that it, it comes... You've got to heal first or find that love. And then I believe my purpose is healing. Um, I believe first it's like that self-love, but that self-love has driven the purpose into healing, like helping others heal as I heal and helping others. Mm, nice. And um, finally, what are you grateful for today? Me. I'm like really grateful for me, like really grateful that I hung on in dark times, but also really grateful that I could love myself and hear that like truthfulness um and come through what I did mm, awesome yeah I think self-love is so important um and yeah where, where can people find you if they want to reach out or see what you've got going on on socials sure so you can find me most platforms at raw sky um I am sky conway but um raw sky and I'm r-o-a-r um, because I didn't want to be limited to kind of like, I feel like if I put R-A-W, that it's just the food and it's not. It's like uh, everything I do, I want to like, kind of roar through. Um, so, and I have a, the website that's rawsky.com and then there's like Instagram, raw.sky, TikTok, raw sky, YouTube, raw sky. So yeah, you'll find raw sky somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I appreciate your time and I appreciate the viewers if they've listened this far. And yeah, wishing everyone a wonderful day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me, Dylan. No, it was a pleasure. And yeah, take care, everyone. Peace and love.